We have discovered another gem here. It's, it's really marvelous, absolutely marvelous. Wow, isn't this luxurious? This is love, I just like touching it. I love that. Isn't that a treat? Wow, it's perfection. It's a dandy. Hey, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Oh, hey, Randy, don't bother me. Don't bother me, buddy. I've, I've got the most lovely view here. Uh, what's this river we're on? Do you know this river? This is the Piscataqua River. I think it might be. And we're in the town of Kittery, Maine. This is a really nice New England scene I'm seeing here. And we have just really lucked out with this visitation today. Uh, we're coming here to see a uh, uh, Choyley Pedrick 47, uh, which is a really pretty cool boat. One of the nice things about the boat we're seeing today is it was designed by a man who is still alive. Oh, no. <laughs> and his name is David Pedrick. Uh, he's opened his office in Newport in 1977, fairly recent. Uh, but he's been involved with uh, eight, eight separate uh, America's Cup boats, including Courageous and uh, Stars and Stripes, uh, and, and the victories in those. So he's a very talented designer and was working uh, within the uh, office of Sparkman and Stevens and doing a lot of the major design work on these things. Designed a host of boats, I think about seven or eight for Choi Lee, uh, our favorite uh, Asian boat builder. We love them and the stuff they've done. They did that wonderful 41 uh, that we that we hungered for for a yeah, long time, way back in the dark days. The <laughs> offshore, Q. yeah, the offshore is gorgeous. Oh gosh, Choi Lee, uh, which uh, which company started uh, oh back in 1880, building commercial boats, uh, progressed up through and eventually caught on to the yachts and then went completely on to building sailboats. And at one stage they they said we need a little help and Mr. Pedrick stepped in there and designed a number of boats, a 41, uh, a f I think it was a 41, maybe a 43 and a 47 anyway. And <clears throat> I'm interested to see this boat today of his because when I look at the specs on it, she is surprisingly close to the PB. Her displacement is within about a thousand pounds. Uh, her waterline length is about 37 feet, same as the PB. She also has some deck layouts and interior layouts that are gonna make me feel uh, warm and fuzzy today. I think you're gonna like this boat. Why don't we head on down yeah, let's check it and, out. and see if we can cross over this, uh, right. this little area down here before the tide comes up, okay? Sounds good. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're gonna get recommended to more people and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Randy, come on aboard, buddy. Oh, thanks. Ooh. We've, we've discovered another gem here hidden in the Piscataqua Back River Creek here. I figured if it was a Choi Lee, it was gonna be a gem. Well, you're absolutely right, and we've had we've had some good luck seeing them. We've had a couple we've really liked, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but this is a little newer boat. She's 1984. I think some of the other ones we looked at were about 50 years old, and still in a marvelous shape. Choi Lee was uh, one of the earlier uh, experimenters with fiberglass and uh, uh, foam uh, construction. A lot of the, f the forward section of the boat, uh, where you don't have bulkheads and so forth, they added foam and layers of glass. So they created a sandwich uh, portion up there, which was, I believe at the time, unique. Now, all these decks were pulled off and, and uh, replaced just 17 years ago. So uh, th that's always a little bit of a, of, of a concern, some people with, with uh, seeing teak decks on boat. One of the nice things I've, I've discovered about this boat already is that it, uh, it, it reminds me an awful lot of the PB in, in some ways. We're an aft cockpit. Uh, she carries the same water line, believe it or not. She's only about a thousand pounds lighter. Uh, probably the beam is pretty close to uh, the PB. And she has, as we were gonna see here in a few minutes, uh, two companionways uh, below. Uh, the cockpit is divided again. So we have lots of room back here for the helmsman. We've got two big uh, variant uh, 32s, self-tailing winches 
and a pair of uh, uh, Barian 24s for spinnaker working. Here's your Raymarine GPS radar center right here and right next to it is your autopilot. Beautiful binnacle with nice richy compass in there. Engine controls, we have forward and reverse on, on your starboard side and the throttle on this side. A nice big wheel and here's your big Edson nut. These you can always unscrew and just pull this wheel right off if you want to and store it out of the way. If you're in a port someplace, a lot of people will take the wheel off and they'll tie it up against the shrouds maybe just so you have more room to party hmm. once you're in port. Don't take it off when you're underway. <laughs> it's less effective that way. We always find little lockers back here, don't we? We do. And this is no exception. What do we have here today? A couple of nice big uh, propane tanks. Those are oh, what those 10 pounders, uh, 15 pounders maybe. Yep. And uh, they're tied down and vented. There's a big vent hole right down beside it. I can see that right, right there that uh, is going to let any fumes out. She's rigged up with life-saving measures here, a life sling on her. These seats are, are popular on a number of boats and they're kind of fun. I have never sailed with one, but I can imagine sitting up here and the boat's heeling over and you're just kind of suspended in midair almost over, over the wake as it bubbles by you. It's pretty neat. Uh, basic grill, gas grill there, or is a magma gas, I think that's a gas, it takes separate yeah, gas. Yeah, there's little, little tanks down in the lazarette. And a GPS antenna behind me. So everything is right here and I see t uh, two speakers, so we're gonna have Anya playing the whole time. Nice cushions here, by the way, very nice. Wow, the weight on that fiberglass. Uh, here we have boarding ladder, life jackets, very deep locker. Here's the autopilot, and you can see the cable for the, for the steering wheel. Here's a stopper for the quadrant. That's when you know your wheel is all the way hard over. It's hit this little pad here. Yep. And if we go the other direction, it's going to strike one of those on the other side of the boat. How do you check those cables to make sure they're healthy and good? The smart people do it with like a cotton glove. You can run your hand over it and see if you uh, find any uh, little wires that have broken. Okay. And you find it right away and you know you found it. Uh, and your white glove will turn red. Uh, <laughs> now, what do you think we have on the other side here? Uh, it doesn't look like another locker. Oh, you know what? You notice that right off the bat. And you're right. There is not another locker there, but we have a window. Guessing we have a nice little quarter berth. I'm moving around the cockpit. Here's one thing notice. Um, reasonably deep cockpit combing here. Not as deep as one we just saw a little while ago, which was, <laughs> you could barely see over it. This bridge deck is low and the dodger is high enough so that uh, you can actually get over the bridge deck and, and into, the, into the cabin uh, past that, which is a big plus. Uh, and also, this is a great place to sleep. Raymarine repeating instruments. And right here, we have a really good size Harkin two-speed winch there for your main sheet. All of the woodwork here is, is all pretty heavy duty. They don't mess around choily, do they? No. It's all heavy, heavy gauge uh, teak and so forth. And uh, they've got line stoppers over here so you can you know, you can do all your reefing right from this point. You've got the main halyard, you've got a boom vang line, and they can all be run to this winch. And then once you're finished doing something with it, then put the, put the lever down, stop it, and then switch over and use something else. This is a clever arrangement. This is a, uh, uh, your traveler. I've never seen this, but I like this a lot. Yeah. Um, because you always have the traveler in control because it's in tension here. And uh, then when you want to move the traveler, I, I can just barely touch it, I'm going to do it too much, but you can see it goes that way. And then there's a reverse um, switch here that's going to allow me to go back to the other direction. What do you say we uh, take a little stroll forward? Oh yeah, sounds good. Well, Randy. We're on the teak deck again, and we really like teak. It's great uh, for footing, and it doesn't heat up if you're sitting out in the hot sun. I'm seeing a little bleeding at a few of the um, screws that are holding it down to the deck. The bungs, yeah, what does that mean, rust? Well, it means a little water's gotten down beside it, and you might want to pull those bungs and put in a slightly bigger screw, clean it out. Pedrick's moved the shrouds inboard to give her a little better sheeting uh, 
angle. Here's your here's your seven degree track running back on the inside. The owner but, told me that this boat will point like no other. They can shave it down to 20, 25 degrees off the wind. I, I, I would not be surprised at all. Big thing here is that I'm walking outside these shrouds. So going forward and aft, it's really terrific. I have a handhold on both sides and I can walk by no matter how the boat's healing. Nice big derades with wind vents and uh, protecting bars so the jib sheets don't rip the wind scoops right out. All the uh, reefing gear and so forth is run back to the cockpit. So the sails we see there, the, the halyards and winches we see there are set up just for hoisting uh, your jib, your main, and she does have a setup for a cutter rig uh, on the boat. So if you want to find yourself out in a real blow and you need just a staysail, he's put a chain plate in here for that. That shroud would come down and tack there, and this is where you attack your staysail itself. And it's got a little pennant on it, you see, to lift it off, and your, your staysail will probably go right to that. And here we have a nice low France <laughs> capstan. <laughs> With self-storing chain. <laughs> okay, uh, chain locker. These are look at this. That's pretty heavy duty. We've got two rollers on the bow. We've got a big Rockna uh, anchor up there, and uh, that's become quite popular. Never used one, but they're apparently really pretty super on almost all bottoms. A couple of big cleats here. Here's a switch for your uh, capstan. The uh, pro furl unit here looks to be in pretty good condition generally, and all the gear up here just looks looks fine. Everything's been re well maintained, well maintained. He has put on the new uh, lifelines that are required for offshore racing. A good sturdy spar, double spreaders for extra strength up there. We missed this before, but uh, both the upper and the uh, intermediate uh, spreaders can be adjusted right down here at the deck. Chain plates and the padding form all look good. No signs of bleeding or anything around here. She does have, interestingly enough, the old swedge fittings. And the swedge fitting is where they take this wire and they put it in a tube and they got a machine that just grips the weenie out of it and, uh, and just practically m melts it into, uh, into the, the fitting right here. Very sturdy, lasts for a long time. The boat's well equipped. I mean, she, this is this is a handy boat. Now, <clears throat> we've got a, uh, another companionway here. What boat does this remind you of? That's actually just a skosh shorter, an Alden 44. Remember her? Two yeah. companionways. And uh, this is three feet longer, but it worked really nicely. But this is a little bigger companionway here. It's got a nice big dodger on it. It's really pretty nice if you're cruising with a racing crew or with a, uh, some friends. You don't need somebody traipsing through every five minutes to come on board. Speaking of traipsing through, should we traipse through ourselves? That sounds pretty good to me. All right, yeah, well, follow me. Randy, come on down, pal. Oh, thanks. Yep. I get to use my, my companionway, I see. Be careful on that companionway. It's a little steep, uh, and especially if you're carrying 25 pounds of camera gear. Um, but. I'm pretty cozy on this couch right now. Isn't this luxurious? This is very Choi Lee-ish. Isn't it? They do a wonderful job uh, with the oiling of their woods. This is a, and is this oil varnish? You're the, you're the pro here on this That's stuff now. That's an oil there, yeah. That's an oil, isn't it? Yep. This is lovely. I just like touching it. Very soft. It feels so great. Look at all the little locker doors. And everything uh, has a little trigger inside pops right open for storage. And look at that. That's as nice a piece of furniture, that one door, as you find on a lot of boats. We have a giant size um, saloon uh, dining area. And if you notice, this comes right over to me, doesn't it? Oh, wow. The headliner, it's got some nice strips uh, that look a little bit like deck beams, but they're really just holding all the, uh, the headliner in place. There is a center line handhold all the way down the middle. We like this because this is a wide beam boat. She's 13 feet and four inches in beam. So that's a lot of beam. You don't want to get thrown all the way across. I see two little doors here. I don't know what they are, but I just want to see what opens up here. Oh, look at that. I love that. Okay, who's a cribbage player out there? Wonderful lockers, lots of storage everywhere. This particular boat is available for charter in the state of Maine. Oh, that's nice. And I think the current rate is about $6,600 for a week of chartering 
3,000 miles of the coastline of Maine. Really airy, bright galley, eh? Uh, and clean and neat. Uh, all the storage we want again. And this is nicely done. Nice big uh, refrigerator. Refrigeration, two sections to this. And they probably have food storage around here somewhere. Uh, oh my word. Oh. You know what that is? This was a can of Denny Moore presented to the Captain Q and Company uh, aboard a 12 meter heritage. And four. Si signed? All signed. Oh. These are all signatures of all those crazy people that came to visit us in Newport. <laughs> a nice big uh, Force 10 uh, four burner propane stove and it's just as clean as can be. Your 14s can go right in here, Randy. <laughs> Each one, you get a little foot bath. Look at the size of the yeah, depth of those. I could use a foot bath. This is nice. Look, all of your uh, condiments are up here high and dry. And you know, there's just everything in here. There's no signs of moisture coming into this boat. Let's take a look over here on the other side. Once again, we have our chart table, right? Oh yeah. Uh, take a look at this. The instrument panel, uh, it looks fine to me, but we we discussed it for two seconds with the owner, and he said oh, it might be a project down the line he, he'd want to work with and update the uh, circuit breakers on it. This is a, a nice size uh, navigation table, maybe one of the better ones we've seen. Why? Good size. There's a little a little uh, tilt to the table. That way you're not working like this. I got a feeling this is going to be okay. What do you think? Ugh. Yeah. yeah, pretty nice, huh? Single sideband VHF, uh, a big repeater for your Raymarine up on deck. I'm not certain how he's going to make out with this bell, but his bell is so close to this. But the, again, if that if that tips over when it boat heals, this should heal the other way, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I think we've seen one, but we haven't really thought about it. It's a tank tender, uh, and this is, this will t uh, tell you how much water you have in your tanks or in your fuel. So you pump it up. And then you can let go of that, and that will settle down. It's kind of like your blood pressure. What's next? Got to be engine, right? It's Follow gotta be me. Right here, right? Follow me. You're going to like this, I think, Jose. What do you think? Oh, nice Perkins. Oh, peekaboo. I, I'd have to check the paperwork we've got, but this looks like it was put in yesterday, doesn't it? And accessibility is is not all bad, is it? Yeah. Here's the Raycor right here. And. And this is on the. What's port, that? This is from the port side. I can grab the Raycor, but you're on the starboard side. And yeah, let me let me move. So, oh wow, even bigger here. That uh, black thing you're wondering about, Randy. There, I'm not 100% certain, but it says sea frost, which tells me it's part of your um, refrigeration system. And the engine mounts look good. And there's a fresh belt on. There's two fresh belts on these things. And this this guy knows what he's doing, keeping his boat. These belts are perfectly tuned. This is a pretty nice engine. Yeah. Wow. What's behind the door? What is behind it? Wow! Look at this. I'm in my little master suite here, and I have a little place to write something if I wanted to, and a place to uh, roll over and sleep really well. And I can get fresh air, and I can talk to the crew. So communication is great. Now here is the head. Here's one little detail. I like that that opens inward. That the door opens inward, yeah. So it doesn't minimize the space in the companion way. Now, notice which direction I'm going. Or an aft. You see we have a nice little sink when this door is shut. Uh, and there's a really big mirror behind the door. Oh, this is really good. This is an access to all those uh, valves that you need to divert or control your holding tank. Uh, what does that word say on that hose? Overboard, yeah. Nice. So that's a, that's a, a serious uh, <laughs> note there too, that it's so big. There's no question. It's not some little tag or yeah. some little magic some marker. Some sharpie marker. Yeah. Right, yeah. precisely. Dry storage, little towel rack behind me, and uh, they put the the uh, TP up a little high. I think that might still be in jeopardy here. Yeah. Uh, you know. Maybe it's just a headrest for you. I could. <laughs> Thank you. Once again, Randy solves the problems. <laughs> this is the door to the cabin, which hides away there. But when you open the door you open another door. It's like you open one window, close another window, right? No, I don't and think that's the phrase. But look yeah. at this with... Uh, oh, cedar, again. This boat is so sweet smelling. It is. Come on forward. I think we got more, more places to live up here. I've taken off my shoes just in case, and sea dog's feet are... Oh, wait a minute. One thing I didn't show you here is that uh, 
aside from the settee, you have a uh, pilot berth that will pop up and lock in place. Notice the size of our berth underneath. That works very nicely. Isn't that a treat? <laughs> this is this is pretty clever, isn't it? Your stand-up TV. It'll flip up. So yep. that'll, that'll flip right up for you. I'm not going to do it right now because there's a trick to it. But what a cute compartment. And you don't have that big black screen hanging around the boat. Outside the forward cabin, we have this locker, which is a giant hanging locker. And remembering this boat is uh, chartered on occasion, they've got a lot of their stuff stored away in here. Now, I think you're going to like this. I'll go in for it. And see if you can find me. Can you find me? Oh, wow. This is enormous. Is this enormous or what? A nice sit-down shower. Seat. There you go. Oh. How do you like that? Peekaboo. That's a disappearing act. Where'd you go? Uh, now, okay. Well, I'm going to stay in here for a while, okay? All right. But I'll check back with you. Oh. Oh, I'm back here already. Oh, we have a twofer. twofer. You notice our, our uh, head. Good old... Uh, uh, what is it, a Graco? One of the original, I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, been around for a million years. Manual does the job. Now, in the forward cabin, we don't have a V berth. We have a, uh, I don't know, M berth. No, what do you call this? It's a, this is really the berth. See this crease line here? This section comes out. Okay. Can you understand that? Yep. And directly underneath it, uh, there's going to be a nice settee. Randy, more storage. The overhead's in great shape. There's no leaks. It's it's uh, it's perfection. I'm gonna give this a try for you because uh, it's, it's not, such a it's getting late in the day. A beautiful you. day. Oh, I'm just gonna come up here for one second and just oh, give you an idea. Look at the size of this hatch. Look at the little storage lockers here. I would say thank you for following me around today. I know you have other places to be today, don't you? And uh, this oh. is cutting into your other places to be time. So nope, just just have to follow you around. That's all. <laughs> You're a liar, that's, liar, that's pants job. on fire. <laughs> Goodbye, Rande. Goodbye. I just want to stay out here for the rest of the day. This, I, I'm with you. Uh, even though even though God's draining the river on us right now, there's still plenty of plenty of water at the dock where SEMA, which is the name of the boat, uh, is presently berthed. This Dave Pedrick, uh, 1984 Choi Lee sloop is just just the berry. She's right behind me here, and we don't usually see these uh, boats after we left for our wrap-ups, but. Um, She's got lovely lines. All of her gel coat's been replaced. It was all stripped off, and the, uh, the bottom was completely stripped and recoated as well. I like the accommodations. Once again, I like that F, any kind of aft cabin with, a four, with an aft cockpit works for me. What do we know? We know it's floating. What can I see right now? In this it's, particular moment. It's floating right now. Uh, it's uh, been designed by an America's Cup uh, naval architect, Dave Pedrick. So, I'm gonna give him 12 right off the bat for that. The PB uh, feeling it, it generates, that's always worth 10 points. And the impeccable condition that she's in, I'm going chunks of 10 today, another 10. 42. 42, and wow, it's just just another perfect boat. And I just can't believe the woodwork after it's how many years? 38. It's a marvelous testament to the workers at Choi Lee. Thanks for watching and uh, we hope to see you next week. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all.
Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Preview. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>